everyone welcome to literary lovers channel uh, today we are, let's uh, look upon a topic called biography or literary it's an uh, autobiographical novel by samuel uh, taylor coleridge published in 1817 framed as a non linear meditative discourse it originated as an intended preface to a volume of poetry so called it self conception as a poetic subject the book addresses thematic elements of poetry such as uh, suspense as well as elements of the poet himself including a decomposition of the meaning of creativity and formed by his knowledge about both past and early 19th century philosophical thought biography or literary her uh, by Samuel Taylor Coleridge as a book that college wanted to write for a long time examining the relationship between the literature and philosophy he wants to look upon the uh, relationship between these two literature and philosophy he examines the use of a language in poetry how how it relates to everyday speech he looks at the relationship between the subject of poetry and its relationship to everyday life Coleridge examines the source of poetic power which relates to the brilliance of the poet. Uh this involves the use of language, meter, rhyme and writing style or the poetic diction. The poet he feels should write about subjects that are outside his own senses of sensation and experiences. This is where the poet in poetic genius comes from these are all the thought of the coleridge about the poet regarding the poet and it's very different from the wordsworth uh if the uh, poet confines confines his poetry to subjects within his own experiences then the work is mediocre coleridge feels that the purpose of poetry is to communicate beauty and pleasure this is an expression of the brilliance of the poet so have we know that sir william wordsworth and st coleridge are two giants of the romantic period they are leaders of the revival of romanticism they contribute a lot in this respect but they don't hold the same views on the nature and the functions and creations of poetry their attitudes was very different and opposite to each other their idea shows that different disposition it is also true that their ideas are innovative none of them is totally accepted by the critics of the different ages coleridge as an apt critic of different literary works he is also harsh critic of wordsworth he criticizes wordsworth's poetic theory and language of poetry and has wore a famous critical book called biography of literary so uh coleridge does not accept the poetic of wordsworth wordsworth says that uh, a poet is a spontaneous overflow of uh, its emotion recollected sorry as emotion recollect in tranquility so uh, but coleridge opposes and wordsworth says that it's moves from ex Uh, ordinary to extraordinary making a poem ordinary to extraordinary but uh, coleridge brings uh, extraordinary to ordinary and uh, wordsworth believes in fancy coleridge and uh, image imaginations so here book examines the works of wordsworth and shakespeare both contemporaries of coleridge they are both are uh, coleridge contemporaries as the coleridge examines the link between literature and philosophy he also examines the views of descartes spinoza and leibniz as well as other philosophers these are the philosophers descartes spinoza and leibniz is a philosopher he uses this approach to examine the source of the poet poet's imagination the brilliance of the poet must elicit feelings of excitement and uh, emotions in the reader and uh, call it examines how this process functions and why writers are more popular than others 
So, um, this uh, Wordsworth and Coleridge. Uh, Coleridge has uh, objections uh, Wordsworth's uh, poetry and the rules of uh, the uh, Wordsworth. So, this goes like this. Uh, firstly, according to Wordsworth, poetry is a spontaneous overflow of, of powerful feelings. It takes its origin from uh, emotions recollected in tranquility. But, but Coleridge opposed this and he says it's not the emotions, it's imagination, powerful emotions. Uh, uh, he believes the product of powerful emotions and imaginations makes a beautiful poetry. And a uh, poet deliberately thinks regarding the uh, poet, poetic lines to create it. It's not a overflow. It's not like it comes like like uh, emotions, overflowing of emotions. So what's was recollected emotions actually means fancy. They're not imagination. The simple emotions of uh, what's for theory cannot be the now materials of poetry. Deep imagination is the motivating force and force of poetic creation. It's according to Coleridge. So Coleridge is for imagination, but Wordsworth is for spontaneous uh, emotions or a fancy. Secondly, Wordsworth believes that nature plays a vital role in the creative mind of a poet, but Coleridge does not believe it. He thinks that nature does not have any influence in the creative mind of a poet. Nature totally is an objective and a uh, objective of human position, but he asserts that uh, this is a uh, poet makes use of this objective present and the nature, and he uh, fills the life uh, in the line of poetry. It comes in biography and literature. Yeah? And thirdly, Coleridge uh, critics criticizes this Wordsworth for his theory of poetic diction. According to Wordsworth, the language of poetry should be the language of general people. He uses a rustic language in his poem. He also says that the best part of language is derived from the objects with which the rustic uh, people hardly communicate, hardly communicate. But Coleridge does not support this. He believes the poetic language should be suitable to the manner and matter of poetry. He also thinks that the language of poetry should be uh, purified. Poetic languages should be free from the grosses, vulgarity and defects of rustic language. It means a Wordsworth says that uh, it uh, it's, uh, should be a common language, communicative language, but uh, Coleridge says that no, it should be about the uh, use of the figure of speeches, meter, rhythm, all those things. Is a uh, it should be out out of this commonness usage of languages. So next is fourthly, Wordsworth avoids the artificial language in his poems. That is artificial language means it's free from this uh, figure of speech, meter, and the rules and regulations of the poet. Poetry. Okay. According to him, the language of poetry must be free from figure of speech and ornamental. And it should be out of ornamental. He has totally rejected figure of uh, figurative expressions, but uh, Coleridge never supports the artificial language. Uh, he is for simple language. Coleridge uses many figure of speeches. It means he supports uh, this a figure of speeches and ornamental language. It means it makes the poet poem as uh, beautiful. So he criticizes Wordsworth's uh, poetic language. Fifthly, Wordsworth believes in mysticism. He believes uh, he be uh, believes in nature. He reminds that nature can influence the mind of a man. But Coleridge does not believe in mysticism. He does not support the mysticism of. Uh, uh, words where he believes that the nature is cold and lifeless. Poet is the one who fills the uh, life to the uh, that's the nature by who are using uh, lines in his poem. So nature cannot influence the mind of a man. So Coleridge has tried to affirm, affirm that Wordsworth is on the wrong track and Wordsworth misinterprets nature and misguides his reader. 
Coleridge believes that human beings can see the image images of their own mind in the lifeless object of nature in this way Coleridge raises objections of uh, uh, objections to Wordsworth's poetry and uh, this biography literary or bi uh, biographical sketches of my literary life and opinions is also one of the greatest work of literary criticism called Coleridge uh, begins by discussing his ex uh, secondary education particularly in classical poetry under James Boyer at Christ Hospital Grammar School from there he launches a discussions of uh, Wordsworth poetry to which he later returns Coleridge takes Wordsworth at face value and applies to Wordsworth's poetry what what Wordsworth in his uh, 1800 preface to the lyrical ballads claimed to do Coleridge shows that the Wordsworth's protestations that his craft was the common language of common people was not strictly true and that this poetry is nonetheless artifice consciously crafted and not the unreflective thoughtless speech he said it respect, uh, represented so uh, still coleridge argues that wordsworth is the finest contemporary poet and an example of poetic genius he also gives his version of the origin of of the lyrical ballads of uh, 1798 saying that wordsworth was to write of natural sen uh, scenes made extraordinary by his craft so he stand for his theory while uh, coleridge was to write of the supernatural rendered credible by his art so thank you friends this is what biography literary says thank you and like and share this video so please do comment if I, if i left any point in this uh discussion thank you hello everyone